We're at the very bottom of Daf Tzadi with Beis. And I have two goals for today. One is to complete the sugya that we've been working on now for almost a week. And the second is to begin the new Mishnah on Daf Tzadi in Mir Sashem. We'll see how this uh, pans out. So we're up to E Nami, which you'll see here on the bottom of the last line on Sadihe Omid Beis. E Nami Adrab Yehuda Nach. Now the Gemara is offering a suggestion to reconcile Shmuel on the one hand, he paskined like Rabbi Yossi. And on the other hand, he was Mekil in the case of of Hidesh Achiv Esa Isha Olach Lolub Dina Sayam Shamash and Mais the Omer Vinasa Seicha and he thought his brother was dead. He was Meyabim, his brother's wife. Now his brother Baruch Hashem comes back alive and well. And we had a machlokes between Rav and Shmuel. Rav says that she can no longer resume her relationship with her husband. And Shmuel was matted. So we try to reconcile that with Shmuel, who paskins like Rabbi Yos. So how do we do that according to Rabbi Yitzhak Nafka? He says, Me my dia pose. How do we know that when Shmuel paskin halach like Rabbi Yossi, he meant both the Rasha and the Sefer. He was paskining like the entire package deal, the whole enterprise of Rabbi Yossi. Even in the case where the relationship between Avram and Rachel was that of an Arusa, and Leah's husband Yitzchak went out to Medina Sayam, so Rachel and Yitzchak went out to Medina Sayam, and when Shmuel says, Halacha Kirab Yossi, it means that Yitzchak can no longer resume his relationship with his wife, Leah. That's called Giso, right? And that's because we're, we're afraid that the public will recognize the marriage between Avram and Leah, the wife of Yitzchak, because they can assume that the marriage relationship in Arison of Rachel to Avram was null and void. It was a Tanai that was bought out. Dilma, as the Gemara here on the, on the top of Daf Tzadi Vav, maybe when Shmuel was passing a loch from Yossi, a eno poser. He was only accepting half of Rabbi Yossi in the case where Rabbi Yossi says eno poser. What's the case of eno poser? That's the case where It was a full-fledged marriage. Let, let me just read it out loud. Bidin culture eno posal yidei acherim eno posal yidei asmuk shaholchu ishto v'gisa v'dina seven nosa achos ishto al piyed echad muteres achos lapsol lebaila yisheba im achos al mivdina sayom v'shalok kedasa tanakama 
שHS גיסו אסור לחזור לבעל. אך באמת הוא סובר שאף ארוס עשו וגיסו ונוסס אשתו, נעשה שיש גיסו, היא מותרת לבעל שאין חושב לתנאי בקדוש. Meaning that Shmuel asked like Rabbi Yossi against the Tanakhama in a normal case where Rachel was full-fledged married to Avram. It was a regular full marriage. And in such a case, Rabbi Yossi argued that Eino Posel that we could be matir not only Rachel to Avram, but also Leah to Yitzchak. We're going to be matir both. And that's in a case where there's no chashash that the public will recognize the marriage to Leah because there was no marriage to Rachel because it was an Arusa. So forget about the Arusa situation where Rabbi Yossi is machmir. Shmuel meant to paskin like Rabbi Yossi Lekula. I'm sorry, what did I just say? What I meant to say, forget about the case of Arusa where Rabbi Yossi is machmir, that's what I meant to say. But rather Shmuel accepted Rabbi Yossi only Lekula in the case where the marriage to Rachel was a full, you know, full course marriage, it was the suin. And Rabbi Yossi was Megil because he said, if you're allowing if you're allowing Avram, I'm, I'm allergic to if you're, if you're permitting Avram to, to resume his marriage relationship with Rachel, then likewise we should be consistent and permit Leah to resume her relationship with Yitzchak. That's the dimension of Rabbi Yossi, which will accept it la'loch. And then that doesn't contradict Shmuel's kula, his leniency, in the case where he went ahead and he married his brother's wife as Yibum, thinking that his brother was dead, and now his brother's alive. And Shmuel permits reenacting, re reaffirming the marriage relationship between the so called dead brother who's alive and his wife. Inami is another way. Of interpreting Shmuel's statement that he accepted Rabbi Yossi Lalocha in a way that it won't exclude and contradict Shmuel's pasak in the case of Yavama. Mimai, how do we know the Isa Liravhuna that Shmuel accepted Ravhuna? Ravhuna was Matir, a Misya Bemis, who was married. Based on Eid Echad, allowing her to go back to her husband, Dilma Lesa, maybe we don't accept Rav Huna, Dilma Lesa, the Rav Huna Klal, Ubi the Rav Hamnuna Kamifudi. And the Machlokes between Rav and Shmuel revolves around Rav Hamnuna. A woman falls for Yibu and she has a relationship with another man, a shuk situation. Rav says that since she had a zika for Yibu, it's as if she was married to the Yavam, and when she goes out and has this Znus relationship with somebody else, then it's the same old din of Ashes Isha Zinsa Shasur Labila that when a married woman has a relationship, extramarital relationship, she can no longer resume her relationship with her husband. Where Shmuel says, 
Well, let's just finish. Rav, Rav Omar, Ari Keshis, Ish, Umifsala, Biznus, Ushmuel Omar, Eno Keshis, Ish. It's not like the case of a married woman whose husband, who's, who cheated on her husband, if you pardon that phrase, is not allowed to go back to her husband. Velo Mifsala, Biznus. When she marries someone from the Shuk, that doesn't prohibit her from getting married to the other. In that case, this machlok between Rav and Shmuel has no bearing whatsoever on Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Yossi is talking about a case of two people who went out to Medina Sayyam and we heard that they died and then they turned out to be alive and had to just, you know, had to juggle, you know, when it's mutter, when it's also to resume the old marriage. That has nothing to do with the machlok is Rav and Shmuel. Rav and Shmuel, contra Rav and Nuna, are arguing about a whole different point, a whole different issue. Inami, another possibility of interpreting Rav and Shmuel, the Machlokas Rav and Shmuel, is Bikidushin Tovsin Biyavama Kamifu. The Rav Omar, Harei Keshis Ish, below Tavsi Bikidushin, Ushmuel Omar, Eina Keshis Ish, with Tavsi Bikidushin. I mean, this. This paragraph here is almost identical to the previous paragraph about whether the Shomer Siyavim Shizinsa is Psula or not. Here's another manifestation of the same issue. What happens if somebody went ahead and he's Makadesh Yavam Shuk, a man from the Shuk, comes and he's Harayat Makudeshisli, gives a Kesat Sharabia. Do we recognize that marriage? Rav says no. We don't recognize the marriage. It's like a man who comes to marry an Asian Ish. It's meaningless. And Shmuel recognizes the marriage. Only after all, Chavei Lavin and Kedushin Tovsin B'Chavei Lav, Rav understood that by virtue of Zika Sibu, she's like an Asian Ish. So the Gemara asks, if Zimna, we already had the Machlokas right before about Zinsa, if the Shomer of Zinsa, whether she's like an Asian Ish or Zinsa, and she's Asur Liyavam. And now you're just repeating that same machlokas to ask if somebody else could be Makadisha in this thesis condition. So the Gemara answers, Chado Michlal de Chavrita Itma. That the reason why we repeat the machlokas is because Itmar, Itmar means that's the way it was transmitted. In one base matrix, it's transmitted. In the scenario of Shomer Siyavam Shizin. So, in, the, in another base page, somewhere else, this Machlokas Rav and Shmuel was transmitted in a scenario of Tfisas Kedushin if somebody marries the Yavam Lushim. But it's the identical Machlokas. And with this, we make a seum on a sugi that we've been learning for quite a while. We start the mission. This is a very interesting mission. It's a bit complicated, but it's very interesting where a man marries five different women and the question is which of those five is a valid marriage? And we'll see various scenarios. It might be one, three, and five. It might be two and four. So Yaakov marries Leah. And from that marriage between Yaakov and Leah, there's a daughter who's born. What's her name? Dina, right? Now Yaakov dies. And somebody marries his wife, Leah. In the Mitzifta, he gives the name Chetzron. That has to do with uh, knowing Tanakh. Anyway, Chetzron now marries the Almana of Yaakov, whose name is Leah. The Noldolobas Ushma Yochebed. So Yochebed is, mar- is the child born to the marriage between Chetzron and Leah. 
So Dina and Yocheved are sisters maternally, meaning they both have the same mother, Leah. Whereas Dina's father is Yaakov, right? And Yocheved's father is Chetzal. So they don't share the same father, but they share the same mother, Leah. Now, Chetron marries another woman. Her name is Ketura. And from that marriage, they have a child by the name of Sara. And now Yocheved and Sara share the same father, Chetron. Chetron dies. This is way too complicated. I don't know why. He has to be so complicated. Anyway, we'll, we'll, when we finish this, I'll, I'll try to simplify it. it. This is way too complicated. Nasa besuel es ketura benodolo bas ushma rivka nimtza shesara verivka achios mina e ketura Nasa besuel es chano benodolo bas ushma malka I mean, it keeps getting more and more complicated because it's just with more and more names. Nimtza Sharifko Malka Achilles Mina Av, Pesuel, Bechain Ruvain, the Shimon Achil. Binosa Ruvain is Malka. Beholach Ruvain Lebedina Sayam, Ubo Eden the Omulo Mesa Ishtaka. Binosa Ruvain is Rivka. Achosa shall Malka me avir. Yeah, I don't know what I'm reading here. I mean, it's, you have to go through all the names here. He has a diagram here. Maybe if we had the diagram in front of us, it would be easier. I know, Don, you've been pressing me on this, and you're right. I mean, we'll have to figure out a solution to this. Maybe in the meantime, I don't have the option of scanning and screen sharing, but maybe I'll photocopy this diagram if we have to. I don't even think we have to, but. In case Art Skull has a diagram. Oh, Art Skull is going to simplify this, I'm sure. Yeah. They're not going to give 50 different names. This is a case where we need Art Skull. I actually once had access to Art Skull. Now I'm trying to remember where it is. I may have left it in Harnof. Anyway, he says... So all these five women are alive and well. Ruvain Mutter Birishona Ubishlishis Ubichamishis. One, three, and five. And again, he goes through the names. And Vipochos Tarasay. Okay, let's just see if we can simplify, simplify this mission without all the names. He says the following, Ruvein Muta be ishto rishona, ube shlishes, ube chamishes, ve osa be shnia, ube revias. Atam. Okay, now maybe we'll get some simplification. Kevon. Sharishona Kayemes, Nimtse Sashmia, Asura al Ruven, Mishumshi Achosa, Shal Ishto Meavia.
אבל סורה השלישית מותרת לו, הרי היא לא קרובה של אשתו. Basically, what's happening, I think we can simplify it, is that in all these different marriages and combinations, Ruvain is allowed to be Miyabain the first, the third, and the fifth, but the second and the fourth are Arias. They are Achos Ishta. And therefore, Pocho Sorosayet. Right? In the case of the Rishona, Shlishis, and Hamishis, Pocho Sorosayet. But the Osir Bishnia, who Bishlishis, Because of Achos Ishto, the aim bias achas me and poteris soros. So when it says pochos toroseim, let's not get confused. It's not the same pochos toroseim that we're familiar with from the first parak, from the beginning of the parak of, of the Masechta, which means that if you have an Arab who falls for Yibum, then she passes up the tzara. What we're saying is something different, that if two women fall for Yibum and he's miyabim one of them, then the other one is no longer in the parish of Yibum. He doesn't have to be miyabim two of his late brother's wives. Now, the im ba al shnia. In other words, if in truth his first wife died, and now he's allowed to marry her sister, the achar misa sarishona. So then, Mutter Bishnia Uberavius and Potros Tursi. But the Osir Bishlishis Uberchamishis. So, as in the first case, he was able to marry Rishona, Shlishis, and Chamishis, but not Shnia and Ravius. In the second case, he can marry Shnia and Ravius, but not Rishona, Shlishis, or Chamishis. Okay. Now, we'll come back to that later on. Let's move on to the next part of the Mishnah. Ben Teisha Shonim Biyom Echad, the mitzvah of Yibum only applies when the Yavam is older, he's already bar mitzvah, and then he could be kona her through Yibum, Again, in Rabbonin, there's something called Kiduche Mamar, that even without Pia, he could be Kona with Kesef Ushtar. That's called Maimar. Again, Midin Torah, according to the Daraisa law, there's no Kenyan in Yavama unless there's Bia. But in Rabbonin, there's Maimar, which means Kesef Ushtar. And we recognize that as marriage. We'll see in what context. Now, once the Yavam has beer with the Yavama, then she becomes Asura on all the other brothers. And our mission now in the Sefer is going to address the question of one of the brothers who's a Katan. He's only nine years and one day, and he has a relationship with the Yavama. Or he does Maimar. 
is ben teisha shonim yom echad who posel al yidei achim. Once he has beer or maimar, then the yavama can no longer be misyabemis. There's no possibility of even with any of the other brothers. She becomes asura on the brothers as a result of the yibum of the bia, or perhaps the maimar of this kata. There are achim poslim al yodam. Meaning, if any of the brothers do a maimar of kiddushin with any with with the yavama, then the all the other brothers are enjoined from yibum from marrying this woman, how much more so if he did Bia, Ella, but here's the difference between the Katan and the other brothers, who, in the case of a Katan, posel chila. Ma'achim poselim chila uso. So in the case of a Katan, it's only tchila before the brothers did anything. If the brothers were first and they did mimer, then the child's mimer is meaningless. However, if the achim did mimer, poslim tchila veso, meaning even if it already was Maimar. Let's take the case where the cotton did Maimar. That's called Sof. Now, after the cotton's Maimar, one of the other brothers does Maimar. Is then Ha'achim post. Any one of the brothers who's passed bar mitzvah could hassle this woman on the other brothers. Now, now what's the point of passing them on the other brothers if the katan already did maimah? Second. I don't know the answer to that question. Hear my question. Again, the Mishnah says that a katan is posel al yadach, meaning if he did a maimer, he passes the Yavama to all the other brothers. And now we're telling me that a achim poselim, even levasok, which means after the katan had already done maimer. So what did, what did that add? I mean, she, she was already psula on the other achim by virtue of the maimer of the katan. Not sure. But in any event, what we do know is that the katan's psul through Maimar is only meaningful, is only effective if he was koden, if he was trila, that his Maimar came before the Maimar of the brothers. Okay, Tzad. How will a katan hassle mitchila? Ben teisha shonim v'yom echet sheba al yevimto posal al yideachim. Bo al yideachim. If one of the brothers had beer with her after the cotton did, the asub ba maimer, or alternatively, if they did a maimer after the beer of the cotton. Another case. Asu nasnu get ochaltsu even after the katan had bio he did maimer poslim al yod and once again the same question gnaws at my mind what's the point to poslim al yod if it's after the katan did either maimer or bio and we said that mitchila he passed.
All right, so this will have to, we'll have to do a refresh and, and we'll go over the entire Mishnah Mutzashev from the top, Chil and Sof, on, on Yom Rishon. But I'm happy that, you know, we got up to the new Mishnah here on Sadi's vote. So let me wish you a wonderful Shabbos, Parshas Lech Lecha, and thank you so much.